What are you doing right now? Like, what am I doing right now? Not, not like right here, but <laughs> where are you working? What are you working on? Okay. So right now I am working in the e-commerce space at Shopify. I am uh, creating and managing the Salesforce platform. How has that work been for you? Rewarding every day. Um, in what way? Well, I get to support entrepreneurs from the small mom and pop shops to somebody that has built a big, large brand to uh, multi-billion dollar corporations. Entrepreneurship is the heart and soul of Shopify, and I love to support entrepreneurs. So going back nine years now, I know it doesn't seem like nine years <laughs> probably, what, what is, tell me about the moment that you had, the first moment where you thought about the student incubator. What was that moment like for you? So that moment was a conference that I was supporting at Hillsborough Community College. Uh, there were a bunch of other students that were interested in sustainability as I was. That's something else I'm passionate about. And I realized, you know, we've got three large institutions, HCC, University of Tampa, and USF. And we were interested in the same things, but I didn't know these people existed. And I saw that as a problem. I uh, wanted to create a space, right? where people with similar interests could come together and collaborate. So tech and entrepreneurship and innovation, that was the interest that I wanted to bring together. I noticed that there were um, a lot of resources within our community, but they were only geared towards this specific area in tech. Create an app. That's the only um, type of entrepreneurs that we want here are tech entrepreneurs. And I felt like, okay, well, what can we do if we bring a bunch of people interested in innovation and entrepreneurship together? And so I worked with USF and they believed in the vision and supported that all the way through. Was there a moment in that process where you thought, this might actually come true. We might actually be able to do this. Yes, um, that moment of realizing we could actually do this is when USF came to us and said, hey, we've heard what you've been working on and we want to support you. Uh, they were very supportive of what we were doing, the space we wanted to create. And I had the best project champion. Um, Dr. Michael Fountain was able to kind of help and push this along. And I think the support, the openness, and just kind of having the respect of the brand USF, of the professor that was supporting us, made this happen. We knew after uh, getting all of su the support that we needed, we would be able to make this a reality. Do you think about it very often anymore? Um, you know, it's still going strong. Um, it's got to be a, like a sense of pride for you. You know, yes and no. I'm very happy that it is still going on. It is you know, a baby it was a baby of mine and it makes me proud. But what makes me feel even better is when I see somebody that I serve through the incubator and they look back at that moment and in that time and realize or show me how much value that created for them. Whether me being called their first business mentor whether them absolutely loving and adoring me for the work that I did and uh, the work that my team did, because this was a collaborative effort. We worked really hard and made lots of impact that people will never forget. Uh, for instance, I ended up going, I ended up being in New York City at the time, one of the companies in the incubator was competing. I went out of my way my first time in New York to go to the event that they were pitching at. You know, that's something that I'll never forget. They will never forget. Um, it's just been a wonderful opportunity to see that impact that we have made in the lives of, of others. So it makes me feel good, but I'm looking to get back involved and, and see how I can help out and support the next generation of entrepreneurs. Well, that's fantastic. So, so you know, you got started. Were you entrepreneurial? when as, as a young child so i think that coming from a um 
uh, entrepreneurial family. My family immigrated here from Jamaica in the 60s. And so uh, when you have folks kind of come over with $20 in their pocket, they've got to be a little bit more resourceful. And I watch all of my uncles and my grandma, great uncles and my grandmother go into lines of business for themselves eventually. Uh, so they were able to not only come to the States, but create that American dream for them. And I think that in regards to being entrepreneurial, uh, there is a certain amount of freedom that you'll only gain through entrepreneurial entrepreneurship. And so for me, it's something that I grew up with. It's something that I want to share. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Um, so was, um, was technology uh, part of your childhood? Um, I mean, with with the meager backgrounds and, and coming over and starting the life with nothing, it probably wasn't at first. But was there a moment when you thought, I really like the excitement of technology and creating something new? Yes, absolutely. So um, computers. I remember when uh, it was kind of a household thing to have a computer, you'd have dial up. And I remember when my mom got me my first real computer. Right. So I was able to get a CD burner and put it in there. But uh, unfortunately, my teacher at school didn't uh, know how to put it in. So I took the computer home. I took it apart by myself. And then I put the computer, uh, the, the CD burner inside. That's when I knew that I really liked technology. Uh, also, when my mom got a high grade of Internet. And so I wasn't on dial up when I started uh, online. So the access that I had to the internet was premium. And that kind of uh, sparked my curiosity in technology and innovation and how we can all stay connected. Well, and I think that speaks to something that is a global issue, which is making bandwidth available to everyone. Because just that simple act of getting high speed internet access sparked a career that has been incredibly successful so far who knows where you're going to go the rest of your life and what you're going to accomplish and i think you're a perfect example of why that is such a big deal absolutely uh i think that everybody needs to have some form of connectivity to the outside world and we're seeing that from all parts of the globe right now be it there are remote uh, tribes in africa that are using technology to sell some of their products that they've been making for years or coffee in Ethiopia. Uh, so I think that staying connected helps us be more resourceful, right? It helps the information transfer faster. Uh, and it really gives us a sense of community. I've built great relationships with people all around the world. And I look forward to using uh, technology to, to bring us closer. When, when, we, when I say the phrase, um, intellectual property and youth innovating for the future. What, is, what does that mean to you? What that means to me is exactly where we are right now, the metaverse, right? We are living in a world where we are going to have more digital assets, right? We are in the creator economy. So how do we protect digital assets, right? How do we protect some of the things that we create, whether it's a new style of editing, whether it is a, a framework to launch your YouTube videos, what does IP look like for digital assets and the metaverse? That's what I want to know. Yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy, you know, um, how fast all these things change and things that you couldn't possibly imagine five years ago are just run of the mill now. So you just... You wonder five years from now, what are we going to say? What are we going to be saying it about five years from now? Ah, yeah. uh, you see, that is a great question. I don't know, but if we look at the past five years and we see what happened, then every year will be five years of the past. We're going to be learning more, faster, innovating faster, growing more. People will be connected. So if you look at Again, the five years in the past, in one year, we will be able to achieve all of that innovation. So the world is ours. The technology is there. The innovation is there. The resources are there. What can USF, HCC, 
UT, um, the Tech Transfer Office at, uh, at USF, the Research and Innovation Department. What can we do to help kids today be inspired? Right. So uh, as far as inspiration and, and how the education system is going to uh, help with that is we need more people that have been successful coming in to speak with them. People that look like them, people that have backgrounds, right, that they can relate to. Uh, we need to be able to know where all of the resources are in the community and go out and find the people that need those resources. When I was working at USF, I didn't just post a flyer, right? I went to the department heads and I talked to the department heads and had them trickle down that information so that everyone could understand where to go if they had just a small idea or a big invention that they have been working on for years. We need to have a grassroots effort to go out and pick up the seeds of the future and take those seeds to the resources to be watered and fed in this good sunshine. <laughs> Thank you.